Hi, this is Lainey Cameron. I'm so excited because I'm here with Aaron Bartles. And Aaron, you just did something unprecedented. You won a group of both awards for the Women's Fiction Writers Annual Book Awards, the debut and the general. You won them both with the same book. I did, isn't that insane? It is insane, and I'm so happy because you're a friend and I can't think of anyone nicer for it to happen to, so. <laughs> Except maybe you. One day, never. <laughs> um, so today we're actually gonna talk about two things. We're gonna talk about the book that won, We Hope for Better Things, and I'm hoping you'll also give us a sneak peek of the new book that's coming in 2021 as well. I absolutely will. Okay, so let me start by showing just one review of We Hope for Better Things from Library Journal, which will give folks a, a sense of this book, which deals with racial history. It's set in Detroit. I loved it. It's historical fiction, but it's like three generations all coming all the way forward to modern day. And it got phenomenal reviews in addition to winning like all of these awards. How does it feel like so much time later, this came out in late 2018, early 2019? Early 2019, the first day of 2019, January 1st. So, so how does it feel that it's still sweeping awards now in 2020? It feels really good. It feels great. I think that um, it's a story that has staying power um, because the topic isn't going away, um, which is unfortunate. <laughs> so it is a three timeline story, like you said, uh, present day, 1960s Detroit and 1860s Detroit. Um, and so it'll, it covers things as far reaching as the Underground Railroad and the Civil War and the Civil Rights era, the Detroit riots of 1967, and some of the sort of modern day challenges that the city has. Um, and I, I just love Detroit. My parents are from Detroit. My whole family has been there for several generations. Um, and so it was a really, it was a really gratifying book to write in a place that means a lot to me and has gone through kind of a lot. <laughs> um, so, so that's the gist. And, and what inspired it? Was it because of those fami family connections or where did the concept come from? You know, the concept did come from a family thing, but it, has, it didn't have anything to do with race at first. It was just an idea of a box of photographs where you didn't know who took them and you didn't know like anything about that person. And that was because my father was a photographer, um, an amateur photographer in the 60s. And so because he's a photographer, he's not in a lot of photos. He's the one behind the camera. And I also, in my family, am the photographer. And so until you started taking a bunch of selfies with your phone, I was not in a lot of photos. Um, but when you see a photo, you're seeing it from somebody's perspective, the perspective of someone not in the photo. And you are getting what they have decided to show you, what they think is important. Um, and all the other stuff is cut out around the edges. It's cropped out. Uh, and that really fascinated me. So it kind of just started with this idea of what could you know about a person without knowing anything about them, just from what they had you look at with what they took photographs of. Oh, that's really cool. And in the story, um, the Today character gets a box of photos and that's kind of what leads to the whole tracking down the history of what's right. happened here. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, which is something that won't happen anymore as people never <laughs> print out photos. <laughs> You'll just get a box of phones and have to like scroll through them. Or have like 10,000 photos in the cloud to work out how to yeah. Yeah. A little overwhelming. I'd rather have a shoebox. <laughs> so what changed in this book? I, I find it fascinating that you were dealing with like multiple historical time periods. How did the book change from when you started it until the actual book that got published? Well, it actually got longer. <laughs> Usually people have to cut things out, but I had to make it longer. Um, I think when I first started writing it, I thought, well, a women's fiction book is about 80 to 90,000 words. So that's how I wrote it. And when I first started talking to agents, one of those agents said, well, what about, what about this and that and the other scene that I want to see? And I said, well, I was worried it would get too long. And she said, don't worry about the length, just write the story. So then it was 120 some thousand words and it ended up being, 103,000. So I did eventually cut things back, but I didn't actually lose any scenes. I'm a copywriter by trade, so I'm really good at slashing things that you don't need, but keeping everything as well. 
So I, I was managing to get rid of a lot of dead weight. <laughs> well, <that's laughs> awesome. well, congratulations again, because this book is so great to see all the awards it's winning now. And this is your first. Your second is already out there, The Words Between mm -hmm. Us. And your third book's coming. When's, in, when's the next one coming? Uh, January 5th. Oh, very close. So tell us about yeah. it. Yes, yeah, so I have a little advanced reader copy so people can see it. Look at that. All that we yes. carried. This is a little tiny because it's the advanced copy, but um, All That We Carried is the story of two sisters who have been estranged for about 10 years uh, since their parents were in a fatal car accident. They went very different ways in their lives, and now they are coming together for a hiking trip, a backcountry hiking trip, and um, they will encounter almost everything that can go wrong in a hiking trip. And they will have to figure out how do we, how do we repair this rift? How do we get along together? How do we move forward? Um, and how do we ha deal with our immediate physical needs and with more far reaching sort of emotional and spiritual needs that they haven't been tending to. And where's this one set? This one is set in the Porcupine Mountains, which are in uh, the Upper Peninsula of Michigan, the far western end. Um, and they're mountains in, you know, sort of a technical sense. Michigan doesn't really have mountains. Um, they're large hills, but it's a beautiful area. And uh, my sister and I have gone backcountry hiking for years. And so I draw from a lot of personal experience. Um, and, and the sisters in the book are not us because we get along too well and we're super boring because of it. Um, <laughs> but, but it was really fun to, to kind of pull out of that kind of lifetime of being a sister and the way you get at each other, because you really want to just get at each other sometimes. Um, so I had a lot of fun bringing their relationship to life. That's awesome. And good luck with the new one. Thank so you. So any advice for other writers? I mean, you've come a long way here, right? <laughs> Third books already coming out, all these awards, like, well, what do you advise? Yeah, my advice would be um, it's going to take a lot longer than you think. Like, it feels like I'm doing a lot all at once because I did have two books come out in 2019 and then there's another coming out next year and the year after. But I started uh, We Hope for Better Things. The initial idea came in like 2011, 2012. I researched all of 2013, wrote the first draft in 2014, was searching for an agent, revising, revising, revising finally got the contract. It didn't come out until 2019. So, I mean, that's a long time and it's worth working and not giving up. You want to make sure that you're still around when everybody else has quit. <laughs> and <laughs> I think that's one of the biggest lessons is just not quitting, but also along the way, improving. So not quitting where you're sticking to your guns and nobody's going to tell me how to write my story. Um, but also not going to the other extreme of taking everyone's advice all the time. It's a, it's a balance um, to keep your voice and still move forward and push forward until somebody says yes. Because somebody out there is the right person for you, um, for an agent, an editor. They're out there and readers are out there. And not every reader is going to like what you do, but some will. And those are your readers. And those are the people who you're writing for. Okay, so what else may folks who are viewing this want to know? Um, you can find almost everything you want to know about me if you go to my website. Um, you were just mentioning before we started that there's a lot on there. I have been um, around the interwebs for a very long time and I've blogged for a long time. I love taking pictures, so a lot of my photography is on there. I even had a, a short-lived podcast for a while, which you can find on there to learn more than you ever wanted to know about my neuroses. Um, but I, I do enjoy sharing my life um, with people online. So if it's something where you want to connect and find out more about who I am as a person, um, Instagram is a great way to do that because that's where I share actual pictures and, and things about my life. My Facebook page um, for my author page will give you book news, but it won't give you that kind of personal inside scoop. So let's um, let's show folks where they can find that. Actually, here we go. So on Instagram, you're at Aaron Bartles writes and AaronBartles.com. And yeah. like you said, there's so much great stuff up there. And also, if people want you to speak to their book club, that's something you're absolutely willing to do as well, right? Oh, yeah. Yes, I've been doing that a lot through Zoom lately. I actually spoke to a book club in Honduras, which was amazing. Wow. Um, so I would I love talking to book clubs. Um, these books are usually good for book clubs because they have a lot of 
things to discuss, um, a lot of issues and um, maybe characters that you don't quite, mm, I don't know about that person. People like to talk about, <laughs> about them. Um, and I really do love talking to book clubs. So I'm happy to do that. And they can just send me an email. You can find my email somewhere on my website. Absolutely. <laughs> or they can always message me. We will always get people there to you go. And if you message me through Instagram, it's possible I may not see it for like a year. So it'd be better to find my email address. Awesome. I'm not great at that. Good morning. Okay, well, it's so fun to have you here. And best of, congrats again. And best of luck with the new one. Thanks so much, lady. I love talking to you. Any chance I get. Take care.